In this video, we're going to get started with making a fat tire unicycle. My daughter and I ride unicycles in the afternoons. I try to do it for balance, see if I can kind of keep my balance up, and it's supposed to be good for your core as well. But we both enjoy unique bicycles. So, I haven't seen one of these before, so I figured I'd give it a try. We managed to get several unicycles. Uh, I think we're up to five now. But this is the uh, unicycle I'm going to be building uh, the fat unicycle from. Uh, it's in pretty good shape, actually, uh, except that it's got a little bit of surface rust. But uh, it's one that we enjoy riding. And I've taken the uh, fat tires off my fat tire bicycle. I put new tires on it. So I have a tube and an extra tire here for that. But also, I'm going to need a rim. So... My plan is to take these three rims and weld them together side by side so I get the width that I need. I chose these three out of a big pile that I have because the profile on the rims are flat on the edges here. So it would be a nice contact point, uh, make it a lot easier to weld. And they're also very similar in profile, if not exactly the same. So the first thing I need to do is take the spokes and hubs off of these wheels. So I got the rims removed off the wheels and also managed to save a bunch of the spokes and nipples which I'll need to reassemble the wheel later. Next step is to clean these, uh, clean these up. They have some paint on them. I'm going to go ahead and wire brush and acetone them and I'll start welding them together. So I'm ready to start welding these rims. On most rims, you probably can't see it in the, uh, in the uh, video here too well, but most rims are made from uh, stock that's been butted together and uh, and there's a seam and it's supposed to be exactly opposite from the valve stem, but as you can see uh, one of these isn't, uh, it's actually the bottom one. So anyway, uh, you would think that that would be something that they could get right, but apparently it wasn't. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but either way, it's going to be very easy to keep these rims exactly uh, in order, in line. Uh, you know, you don't want them rotated a little bit left or right. Otherwise, the spoke holes won't line up. So, uh, so I'll just uh, line them up to the, uh, uh, to the seams here. And I did verify that the third rim is made correctly. So the incorrect one will just be in the center. Uh, no big deal since I'm not planning on using those holes anyway. So, I've got my three rims welded together and I think it came out okay. Uh, my welds uh, not too bad considering uh, how they usually come out. My strategy for using the seam to line up all the holes didn't work out exactly well. Uh, but I think that I can work with this I'm going to give it a try and see how it works out. Went ahead and pulled the wheel off the unicycle, took the tire off the wheel, go ahead and release all these spokes, and what I'm after is that hub. Free at last. Now I have a hub for my new rim, and just in case this didn't work out, or doesn't work out, went ahead and saved the old rim and the spokes. Probably wouldn't use these spokes over again. They're pretty rusty, but uh, since it fits this hub and rim combination, uh, I decided to go ahead and just hang on to them. So, if I haven't come to the point of no return, certainly come to the point of hard return. Went ahead and saw this hub in half, and I got a piece of uh, pipe here that, uh, that I'm going to weld to the hub. Obviously on either side, but... Uh, I have all these spokes, and uh, they're all the same length, but they're that length, and I don't want to have to cut and re-thread all of them, so my plan is that before I go ahead and weld this, I'm going to go ahead and lace up the rim, and then see how wide I can make this hub, uh, you know, by tightening up the spokes. Uh, as these go further apart, then you're going to need longer spokes, so... Uh, by lacing up the rim and then moving that to as wide as I can get it, then I have the perfect width so that uh, so that this rim is going to work out. So 
So anyway, uh, I'm going to start off by uh, wire brushing uh, this rust off uh, you know, so that I have a clean spot to weld to. So when I mark, I don't have to wire brush that off, and then I'll get this thing laced up. Another point uh, worth mentioning is that uh, just shortly before I cut this hub in half, uh, but after I got these rims welded together, I thought, you know, I wonder, I want to make sure that it's got the same number of spokes. 36 spokes is the most common, but it's certainly not the only standard. Uh, you can have uh, 32 and uh, 28 spokes are somewhat common as well. Uh, I did get lucky. <coughs> the three rims and the hub are all 36 spoke. Well, I guess this is why it's a good idea to run the test. I was expecting that the additional space required on the inside of the hub would be essentially one win rim width. Uh, I can also understand how it could even be the distance from this hole to this hole, but it turns out that it's actually quite a bit wider than that. So anyway, looks like I'm going to have to cut another piece of pipe. This one's not going to be long enough. So I've got my wheel laced together. Uh, the hub isn't welded yet, but I just wanted to make sure all the parts fit. Uh, the spokes are uh, not tuned, but reasonably tight, and I think this is all going to work out fine. Uh, the pedals are 180 degrees, as close as I could tell. not quite sure exactly how to measure that closer, uh, because the uh, shaft is tapered. You know, I can't just put a bullet level on there and then put it on one on the other side and see that they're both level. So uh, I'm not quite sure exactly how I would do it, but uh, I'll probably uh, think about it a little bit before I go ahead and tack weld the, uh, the hub together and uh, get this wheel finished up. So I have some tacks on here, but uh, you know, trying to weld around these spokes isn't going to work out. So I'm going to have to unlace this entire wheel and finish the welding so that I can uh, uh, get this done properly. So I wanted to remove my bearings uh, before I do the welding so that I don't fry them. And I had to remove the cranks to do that. So anyway, we'll get this welded up. And I guess I'll wire brush it and see if I can get a coat of paint on it. So I got my hub painted. And I guess this doesn't show up too well because it's so bright. But since this is for my daughter, uh, it's painted pink and white. I went ahead and painted the rims as well. So, I've got my wheel painted, welded, laced back together. Need to put the uh, crank arms back on and get a tire on this thing. So, uh, all the spokes are reasonably tensed up. And it seems to be running pretty true, although I won't be able to truly true it. Or really true it, maybe? I wouldn't be able to really true it until it's on a frame. So, uh, which I don't actually have yet. So, uh, looks like this is about done. Typically, uh, the way that uh, you protect the tube from the uh, spoke ends is with a, a rubber strip. Uh, obviously, uh, that's not going to work here because we have these welded spots. So, I think what I'm going to do is just put down a layer of Gorilla Tape. So, anyway, uh, we'll see how that works and uh, move on from there. So I have the inside of this rim lined with duct tape. Said it before, spare the duct tape, spoil the job. No good job goes without duct tape. So my tire is on and it's holding air just fine. So I guess this uh, wheel is complete. In the next video, we'll go ahead and build a frame for it. Uh, I think that we'll be using this seat. And we will be using uh, these specialized uh, bearing holders. But I've got another frame, uh, another bicycle that I plan to chop up for the uh, risers. I may end up possibly using the seat post here as well. So anyway, we'll try that out. Thanks for watching my video. 
Have a great day. Also, any thoughts, comments, questions, uh, please leave them below. I try to get to them all.